All right. Um, thank you for everyone coming tonight. Uh, it is Wednesday, May 15th. This is the town hall, uh, I mean the um, Brookfield Select Board meeting. Um, call the meeting to order at 6.20. Please uh, stand to the pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have Jacob recording from the town. Anyone else? And Maureen's uh, also recording. Anyone else? Good. Uh, announcements. A reminder that an FY25 budget presentation is set for tomorrow at 7 p.m. Uh, at the Brookfield Elementary School, 37 Central Street. The presentation will follow the select board meeting set for 615. Questions and comments from the public are welcome. Agenda item number one. Reorganizing the board. I'm going to make a motion to appoint Brad as our chairman. I'll second that. I regret it. <laughs> <laughs> We're accepting the nomination with regrets. <laughs> uh, so, no discussion. Uh, no discussion. All in favor? Yes. Aye. All right. Agenda item number two open meeting law complaints dated April. 4th, 2024, um, April. Mr. Mr. Chair, we need, if we're doing a reorganization, we need to. Um, oh, the other, the, the other seats. The other positions. Yeah. Um, if we're keeping I'll it. make the motion we make up the vice chair. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll motion that uh, Rich become the clerk. Second. <laughs> no discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, so agenda number two, open meeting law complaints dated April 4th, 2024 and April 25th, 2024 from John David Holcraft, acknowledge receipt of the April 25th complaint, additional discussion of April 4th complaint, and consider responses to complaints. So I don't Shall know. I take it away? Oh. Take it away. <laughs> so. When we were here on April 25th, um, Mr. Holcroft had handed um, former Select Board Chair uh, Tom Regan an open meeting on complaint based on- Morning the, Border, can we know who she is? My apologies, I'm so sorry. Michelle Randazzo from KP Law Town Council. Thank you. Um, and handed an uh, open meeting on complaint, which is uh, with respect to the April um, 11, 2024 mm -hmm. Select Board meeting. And there had been a previous, previous complaint that he had filed dated April 4th with respect to a March 21st select board meeting, um, which the board has already previously discussed in, in open session. Um, but as both complaints do have one aspect that overlaps, an allegation that there's some discussions that go on that have gone on after a meeting has concluded that Mr. Holcraft has alleged were um, in violation of Mi'kmaq, it made sense um, for us to have sort of that discussion together on both of them, and, and the board can discuss its its responses, and then we can, um, you know, d decide how the board wants to move forward in terms of, of, of formal response to the two complaints. Um, I'll, t I'll give sort of my, uh, you know, we'll just, without reading them in detail, I'll just go through them briefly. The first complaint with respect to the April, excuse me, the March 21st meeting, alleges two issues. One, that an agenda item was insufficiently detailed, in that it referred to Sun Fusion's HCA. Um, just generally speaking, the Attorney General doesn't recommend that you use initials or anything. Um, they want folks to spell it out, so host community agreement should be spelled out as host community agreement. Sometimes when a, when a might item occurs on multiple <laughs> agendas, you know, yeah, it kind that, of- That would have been on there a couple, three times. You know, there's, there's a sense that, that the public at large understands what the issue is, um, but typically, you know, moving forward, it would be appropriate to spell those um, and acronyms out or those abbreviations that everybody thinks that they know. And, the, and the, sort of the, the example that the AG often gives is, you know, uh, and Brad would know, you know, in fact, FAA, sort of the Federal Aviation Administration. Well, most people know, or some people know what that is, but not everyone does. And so, um, you know, that's the general recommendation in terms of, of the, um, uh, the level of detail, right? Um, 
the Attorney General has also said that any agenda item, it is inherent or presumed that within the agenda item is the possibility that the board may take action on the particular agenda item. So there isn't you know, a requirement that the agenda specifically say, we're going to take votes on the Sun Fusions HCA or host community agreement. It's, it's presumed. So um, you know, the, the general rule of thumb is give as much detail as you can um, you know, to provide folks with information while at the same time recognizing that you, know, these, you probably have some limited uh, um, room on where you post. And uh, so I think as, as the new town administrator is coming in, he may have some own ideas, especially from his prior um, service as a member of a, a select, or his current service, yeah. continuing yeah. service yeah. as a member of a, endless a, a, service. And, endless <laughs> service. <laughs> as, exactly, yes. <laughs> as a member of a select board, may have some you know preferences and ideas about how to structure the agenda and how to frame things. And so you may, I would expect that you may see, um, you know, possibly some changes in how the agenda looks moving forward because of that. That's pretty typical. But as far as the, uh, the um, comment about the Sun Fusions HCA agenda item not being specific enough, like I said, no abbreviations moving forward. This, uh, this sound, excuse me, this sounds crazy, but if you're going to refer to something in, in multiple places in the agenda or in the minutes, you can, you know, sort of spell it out fully and then you know, indicate that what the abbreviation will be moving forward. And that usually happens more in minutes than in agendas. Um, the other allegation in this particular complaint, which is the one that there's a parallel with the second complaint, is, is the notion that there was some discussion by a quorum of the select board after the meeting um, to discuss, to deliberate on matters. Um, and that may potentially be a violation of the open meeting law. My understanding is, is that there were um, d uh, with respect to this specific meeting, there was some execution of, of documents. Um, if the board has voted on them, it is completely fine to sign them um, outside and uh, outside of the meeting, um, as long as they voted on it. I mean, it is not atypical, for example, for folks to come in at different times um, of the day to sign to sign a, 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 a contract, an invoice, you know, a, a, accounts. Uh, payable document, so long as that has been something that has been properly addressed in the normal course when required at an open meeting. Um, and so there, there would not be any specific, you know, in my view, there wouldn't be um, an open meeting violation on that um, respect. Now, I, I will just say that there's, um, you know, the board had a discussion about this. I wasn't present at the prior board meeting, but, you know, whatever, fo whatever you folks didn't, if you want to recap a little bit of that discussion, you could. I mean, I think there's. I, I, I think it was one. almost identical to what you yeah. just said. It was yeah. basically. That, I think, honest, I didn't, I didn't uh, <laughs> yeah, see I any mean, video or I mean, basically, we acknowledged, and, and Tom publicly acknowledged, if I recall properly, and we could probably check the video, he acknowledged that there was an opportunity to enhance the, uh, the details in the agendas and that we would do that going forward. I don't know that he referenced it specifically based off the abbreviations, abbreviations <laughs> yeah. but he was like, yeah, we can put more detail in there. That's that's a reasonable request and, you know, there was no ill intent. Like you said, everybody's just busy and, you know, you get so entrenched in, it's like the 18th time the thing's been on the agenda. Who doesn't know what's going on? Right. Sort of a mentality. And, and you know, just, right. so. and, and just as a, as a side note, right, the idea is to have it be understandable for someone that has no you connection no to knowledge. Right? right? Right. So that's so. So and there's a reference in this complaint to some other video of the meeting after adjournment. I've not seen it. I don't know what that means. I don't know who this other person um, or what the other video is. But you know, if and in fact at some point that you know. Uh, we're provided with that, and there's some additional information that we need to address. We'd certainly come back to the board and do that. So that's sort of the, the my take on um, the allegations that are raised in this the first complaint, um, and it sounds like it's pretty much what you folks had discussed yeah, previously. And I think what we, we what we had intended was for the discussion to get back to you all and send a formal written. And and that's sort of what just to jump ahead to the second complaint, um, that was sort of going to be my suggestion, is that after we discuss the second complaint, that there be, you know, a, a determination. So formal draft. Yes, yes. Perfect. And, and, and <laughs> no, I mean, you know, look, this is what, we, this is what we're here for, right? Um, 
So the second complaint, as I said, was, was handed to um, the former chair at the meeting on April 25th. Um, it, again, it refers to, again, an April 11th meeting. Um, Sorry. No, it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, the, the issue, again, was post-adjournment discussion. Um, it's my understanding that the post uh, agenda discussion was scheduling in nature, um, which is something that can be discussed outside of an open meeting. Otherwise, you'd never be able to get anything done, right? So that is um, the, uh, that's my understanding of what was discussed. Um, whether or not it would be holding a daytime meeting, that would, you know, or just simply holding a meeting, um, so long as the discussion is scheduling in nature. Um, it's also my further understanding that, it, you know, a conversation ensued between Mr. Holcraft and Mr. Regan um, that Beth did not participate in, um, that she witnessed the first I, I, two seconds of, or well, however long well, I, would say, I was. I probably sat there for probably a minute or two just okay. staring at the two of them going, wow, <laughs> finally packed up my stuff and walked away. Um, and so, you know, that's different quite frankly, than board members engaging in post adjournment discussion over a matter of substance and not scheduling. Um, <coughs> look, it, it is not atypical for there to be post-meeting discussion when people are packing up their things, when the computers are getting packed up, you know, that sort of thing. It happens all the time. Sometimes there's actually people packing up chairs and things like that. And, and the, the caution is just, you know, keep any post adjournment discussions, but putting a core memorial of the board members to, you know, just scheduling or the weather or the Bruins or something like that, right? And depending on where you're at, maybe you don't want to talk about the Bruins or the Celtics, but, um, it, you know, the reality of the situation is that there is, it is not atypical for there to be post-meeting discussions, just we just need to be mindful of what and what we can't talk about. And that's my understanding of the post-meeting discussion that um, occurred on April 11th, after the April 11th meeting. And so, um, Beth and Brad, as you were there, is there anything, did I get it wrong? Did I get it right? Did no, I think. No, I think that's yeah. accurate. Um, so, well, Unless the board has anything that they want to add in response to those two complaints, um, you could certainly uh, vote to authorize me to prepare written responses um, in accordance with the information discussed tonight. You can also choose if you'd like, and Ron's like, yeah, don't get me in the middle of this, but um, you know, you could authorize me to do it you know, in consultation with the town administrator, or on my own, or one of you, it's, it's whatever you're comfortable with, but, but it, we, I just like to have it in a vote so that it's clear that um, that I have the authority um, to send it out without it having to come back for yeah. another, for another uh, review by the board. Are you good with doing the, yeah, I'm fine, I, I could certainly do it with the show. Well, I would try to, my position would be, if Ron is good with it, I wouldn't need to, Incur any more costs with Copeland and Page unless you feel like. Or no, they would still do no. it. No, I do it. Yeah. I prepare, okay. but we wouldn't. We wouldn't need to come back and have okay. another meeting. So that's I'm, it. I'm, right. And it would tend to be more efficient. So I'll make the motion that uh, the town administrator and our legal counsel prepare the response to the two open meeting law complaints on March. 11 is that what it was so one of them is with respect to a, a, a march 21st march 21st meeting and april 11th and an april 11th meeting second uh second yes any discussion all in favor Aye. yes all right uh Item number three, review and possible execution of no trespass order for library annex John David Holcraft and consider new complaints and possible expansion of no trespass order. Um, Want me again? Floor is yours. <laughs> so when, when we were here on April 25th, um, the board had uh, taken some action vis-a-vis -vis Mr. Holcraft's interactions with staff and other uh, board committee members. and when we, we, we rounded out that discussion with um, a request that I prepare 
the language of a no trespass order that the, that would then be considered by the board. Um, at, at, and here we are. Um, and it's you know, my understanding is since that time there's been some additional issues that have been raised to you folks about um, Mr. Holcraft not honoring the spirit or the intent of what the board had decided. Um, in Wait, this order. Do you have a copy of that? So. We don't need. No. 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 Do you no. have a copy of the? No. Why? It's public record. Why are you speaking? We we, we don't need. Because to. I have a right to, yeah. sir. I don't no, know who no, you no, are. No. Hey, well, no. I think it's stop. Stop. I don't. Stop. I, I so, don't know so who if, you are. If, 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 I, 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 if I may. Okay. So under the open meeting Where's law, the copy if of someone is Excuse disruptive me. to the meeting, yeah. Excuse then the me. chair can warn the individual that they will. This be will be a warning right now. To leave if they continue with the If this continues, you'll have to be removed. Um, so you don't have a copy of it? That, so okay. we have a draft that the board has for review mm -hmm. um, that it can choose to decide to uh, adopt it and sign it um, insofar as additional issues have arisen that the board wishes to discuss. It may choose to do so tonight in connection with determining whether or not it wishes to expand the scope of the um, no trespass order or take other actions. One of the other things that, um, in addition to the no trespass order, the other action that the board voted uh, to take that was in fact taken was to direct town staff and employees and volunteers that they were not required to interface with Mr. Holcraft in person in the first instance, that if he wanted information, he wanted to transact, transact business, that he needed to um, reach out you know, through written means for purposes of scheduling an appointment, um, or and it would then be up to the the staff person, volunteer, or or uh, vol uh, committee member uh, whether they wished to in fact interface with him in person or through written means. So those are the two things that we d that were discussed and voted on by the board on April 25th. Mr. Holcraft was was present, um, and so now this is the the no trespass order for you that I prepared that I think reflects what you um, discussed, uh, discussed and then you decide whether you want to go with it whether you, or whether there's additional issues and concerns that you want to address now. Well, I have some concern the fact that I was not here for that. I, I probably won't be participating in it, right? But since I've become elected, I've looked into it a little bit, and I have some concerns on how he was sanctioned. Okay. Based on the information that was given. I have a copy of the complaints, but I also have spoke to one of the complainants that her view is totally different than the complaint we have. From the same so, person? So, Brenda at the library, I don't know her last name, Brenda Manaville, made a complaint regarding Mr. Holcraft's behavior. One of the women that were at the community club meeting, I spoke with personally, and she said her version was totally different than Brenda Manaville's. So that's somewhat concerning to me. So I think, I don't know if now is the appropriate time to get into that. So I don't know if Mr. Holcraft has been formally served for the due process, and I just want to make sure that before we talk about him, that there's been due process. So if you would like me to address that. Yep. So as okay. we discussed at the April 25th meeting, um, this isn't like, there are assertions of due process, but the, it, this is not a situation where there is a legal due process requirement. Okay? Okay. Mr. Holcraft was, had the opportunity to respond to the specific complaints that were raised to him. He indicated that he didn't agree. The board ultimately made its decision. Um, there is, you know, he opted for that discussion to be held in open. Um, and really what, in my view, what we're talking about is the board's obligation as steward of the town buildings 
as well as its responsibilities to employees and volunteers. Um, they have to balance those two things. Um, the ultimate decision for the board at the time was not to bar him entirely from town hall for purposes of attending planning board meetings, for example, um, and not to bar him, uh, you know, again, not to bar him entirely from town hall. Um, and in fact, this was the limited, um, what, what's proposed to you is based on the information that we had available um, at the April 25th meeting, it was limited to the library annex, um, which as it is, isn't a building, my understanding, that is currently open to the public for just the right to pass and repass, right? There's specific limitations on, on um, who can access and when. So that was the discussion that occurred. My further understanding is, is that there have, since that time, there have been, you know, folks have come forward and said, Mr. Holcraft is coming in and he is saying, I don't, you know, I don't have to listen to that, I don't have to abide by that, they can't do that to me. And you have some of those today. Um, the board can certainly discuss those and decide whether or not you believe that those are legitimate, credible, based on the other information that you have, um, and whether or not you want to expand the no trespass order or issue another warning. I mean, there's, Talking about it in open, okay. here it is. All right. Yeah. So do you want to start with the first complaint that came in after the sanction? Or how do you want to? Sure. So the first complaint, um, I had talked to her. It wasn't, why don't you just read this again? And if I it wasn't just, a heated this is, discussion. This is just, <laughs> by the so way, I, I just want to be yeah. clear. We are talking solely right now about the, the, new the issues with respect to Mr. Holcraft, Correct. right? I don't. I, I, I just don't want us to get into a place where we're talking about things that either aren't on the. You know, we, yep. We're not here mm -hmm. to talk about tonight, but maybe at another time. With the new complaints. Um, no, these are these are these are okay. I'm, I'm just talking right. about yep. vis a vis Mr. Holcraft, not yep. other people. Um, so it wasn't a heated discussion, I would say, um, but it was concerning. In, she was concerned that he was basically stating he can do what he wants. And Mr. Chairman, may I speak? At some point, I'd like to speak here. And that will ultimately be a decision for the board if, if you want to have him speak. But I would, I would suggest that I, you have your discussion, and then right. you can make that determination. So, Brad, can you tell me which complaint you're talking about? This one here. Okay. With Brenda Parrish. Yeah. Okay. I also spoke with Brenda. Yeah. I have a concern there. I mean, uh, I wasn't part of the sanctioning board that said it, but in speaking with Brenda, she said he came in on May 1st and paid his taxes. I would have grave concern with, because I wasn't privy to the previous meeting with him. Mm -hmm. I would have great concern sanctioning him based on that. I did talk to Brenda as well. She told me he did come in. She said he wasn't abrasive. He wasn't overly friendly, but they did have a discussion about the fact that he shouldn't be in there. And he said he was here to pay his taxes, and he paid his taxes and left. Right? So. I know Mr. Holcraft is not typically, uh, he's been very opinionated at times, but she did not specific, specifically say that he was out of line for that particular Right, well, yes. And that's consistent with what she yeah, provided yeah, in yeah. writing. So in that, that's at, my at that, concern. At that, okay, so, and, and here's the trouble that I have with it, mm -hmm. okay, is that um, the direction given at the last select board meeting was clear. And so that I'm not there was, so just right, so, uh, okay. yeah. so and, I'll and remove remember, myself yeah, from that and, part and, just, and, you, oh. and it's fine for you to remove yourself yeah. from that part of it, but I just want to explain kind of the, the okay. psychology, sure. here, right? It's, 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 a, it's about boundaries and it's about having the same expectations for different people and it's just like why we have, you know, we started really trying to work through um, you know, ensuring people adhere to the code of conduct and making certain that 
the rules apply to everybody equally. Okay? So the board had both publicly directed Mr. Holcraft and sent out the memorandum in writing that said, before you come to do business, contact the individual in writing to determine how you're going to do that business. I hate to put it this way. You can pay your taxes even if you're mostly a cash person. You can go down to the post office, get a money order, stick it in an envelope, throw it in the box, and never walk in the town hall. There was no need. That was my opinion. There was no need yeah. other than to play rules lawyer and to walk up to the line. Can I put my toe over the line? Can I put my toe over the line? To walk in that office to pay that tax bill. There was no reason other than to functionally defy the instructions to prove that the select board had no purview over his behavior in that matter. And this is an individual that's had issues. Problems in the past. past. Indicated okay. that he did conduct himself professionally because if you're testing that line, right, mm -hmm. you're going to test only that line and not take it way over because then it just, then you further justify the fact that that order is in place, right? So it's indicative of a behavior where I'm saying, okay, let me see how close I can drive to the edge of the road before I fall off the cliff, right? And see if anyone's going to put a guardrail there or not. Because otherwise, I'm going to drive even closer to the edge and see how far I can press it until people are going to take action. So that's my okay. perspective on this, is that it was a calculated method of testing the limit. And it, and it may be, I don't... Right. I don't know that. So, so. are we good? May I make a comment on what you said? No, there's no public comment in this meeting. Why not? So, if if, if someone is instructed the meeting, you can make a warning and ask that they be removed. Yeah, this is your last. <laughs> last there is no public comment in this meeting, just for everyone to know, and you'll be asked to leave. Um, are we all set on that one? I'm good. Do we want to hear anything from Holcraft on that one before we go into the next one? So the only thing that I would just add is that there was some information, you know, there was some discussion at the last meeting about that meeting at the library annex, and you, you have a couple of different statements, I think, in your packet about yeah. what people felt and what they didn't feel, but I think, you know, there was also, um, I mean, there were, at least from my recollection of what we discussed on April 25th, together with the information that you received today, maybe maybe some, maybe one person there didn't feel threatened, but it seems like there was several people Others, yeah. who felt that they were, you know, it was inappropriate. This was uh, a cumulative. Impact. Right, right, and you know, look, we're all gonna, we can all have different perspectives on things, but it wasn't, you know, from my view, at least from the information that that we talked about, the board talked about at the meeting last um, on the 25th, and what. Uh, Excuse me, on I mean, on April twenty fifth, the days are of blending. Um, and what additional information that has been provided about that meeting? It does seem like there's, um, you know, the weight of the number of people. You know, what's that saying? If, if, if ten nuns say it, does that necessarily mean it's true as opposed to, you know, one nun or whatnot? But I think you know it's ultimately up to the board to conclude whether or not that they, you know, any of the information that's been provided to you today or in anticipation of this meeting changes your perspective on the issue with regards to the meeting at the library annex. That's one thing. Right. Well, and here's my thing. With the way that the trespass order is written, right, and, and and Rich, I understand your level of discomfort with it, and I respect that. Um, but honestly, if a private entity is having a meeting in that building, and you're not part of that private entity, no one's got any business being there, first of all, right? We're not telling them, and, and then the rest of it says, if there is an open meeting, then you're entitled to be there. So functionally, all we are doing is defining his ability to use that facility the same way everybody else is, but because he's chosen to dis determine that certain rules don't apply to him, okay, we're now having to define it in writing. It's kind of like, I love, Charlie Wilson was on our, 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 our ZBA for years, and, and I love going down to, to Charlie's shop and saying, you know why we have too many rules? You know why we are over-regulated? Because there's always that person that needs to be regulated, right? 
I'm in aerospace, okay? And, and even though we're over-regulated, we're probably not regulated enough because there's some person that's gonna figure out how to circumvent the rules that are there because shit falls out of the sky if you don't follow the rules, okay? So when you reread that trespass order and tell me what's different about how we are defining his access to that building than how the average citizen of Brookfield has access to that building. They have to go to the library director and ask to go see the collections that the historical society has over there. They have to ask the library director, can I use it for my for this meeting, for this group that I have? Okay? They have to, if it's a, a private meeting, do you want me coming and visiting the scouts for no reason when the scouts are having a meeting over there? I'm not a, I'm not a den mother, right? Do I have any business being in that building when the scouts are there? No. All we're defining in that trespass order is reasonable neighborly behavior. That's it. So what, what's the problem with the trespass order? That's my perspective on it. So I've got too many rules because people just can't agree on what that communal acceptable behavior is. Are we going on that one, or do we want to go? So I'll make a motion to. Do we want to hear what he has to say on that I, one, I mean, or do we, we can, want to go to the second one? I'm, I mean, it's up. It, it's up to you, Mr. Chair. We can hear what he has to say about it. You've heard my opinion on it. Do you want to go to the second one and then hear? Why don't we go to the second one and then we can. Okay. Okay. Second one's a little trickier. Um, Do you have anything that you want to so, say on this? So I don't I really want to get myself in trouble. <laughs> well, so, you know, it's, as was discussed in open session at our April 25th meeting, there are obviously issues that, um, between Mr. Holcraft and, you know, another uh, board member that transcend town hall, right? And transcend sort of the s sphere of, of um, concern, right? Um, it's hard for me to say where those issues, you know, where, where those, you know, there's a, there's a private dispute that's ongoing that is outside of the select board's purview. It's in a court. It's addressed by the court. To my knowledge, we do not have a court order directed to the town or that we have that gives us clear direction. On, you know, it is not uncommon for there to be court ordered stay away orders. Right? Um, if that were to be issued, I would expect that the board would follow it, the police driver would follow it. We don't have that, right? And so, you know, I, I you know, I, I think there's likely to be two different sides to um, this particular complaint. Um, I, I think we, the board can certainly reiterate what its expectations are of conduct that occurs within town hall, at town meetings or, you know, sort of town business adjacent. You know, the, the, the idea that there can be, you know, there can be interactions that occur off-site that we may have an obligation to handle, depending on the circumstances. Um, but as I see it right now from what, what, what's presented, it, 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 it is quite possible that this is really, um, you know, a, a, a spin-off or part and parcel of that, that court complaint that's ongoing. Um, and, and just to be clear, because I, I think we, we did take pains when we discussed this, when the board discussed this at the last meeting, that the initial directive to staff and volunteers that they need not um, you know, engage with Mr. Holcraft in person in the first instance was, was directed towards the, in, in the staff and the employees and volunteers so that they didn't feel like they had to for risk of, of their job, engage in those discussions where, is in the case of, of Brenda, she's not comfortable with it and she doesn't want to do it, right? That Mr. Holcraft may choose not to respect that may impact how the board feels in terms of how it addresses no trespass orders or further directions or orders that it makes to Mr. Holcraft. Um, 
with respect to this this additional complaint, um, I, I just I can't. I don't know that we can really um, make a determination one way or the other because I think there's a lot that's tied to you know an outside dispute mm -hmm. that's ongoing. And if I were to take action based on something that's occurring in a court case, I wouldn't feel too comfortable up with that unless right. I had like a, a court order or something very clear from the court that set parameters for engagement. Yeah, and that currently doesn't really exist. Not that, not that, not to my knowledge, and I don't think we've ever been provided, the board has ever been provided with that. And you know, it's unfortunate that things have sort of gotten to the point where anybody's going to court, right? I mean, you hope that that would not be ever the outcome, but I think sort of to Beth's point, you know, this is sort of where you started down the road of adopting codes of conduct in the first place because there was an, a perceived need for them based on the feedback you were getting from your staff and from board exactly. members. And, 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 and actually, we were slow to do it because it, as early as right before I got elected the first time, we had people requesting a no bullying policy probably two years prior to me coming on the board. So seven years ago, the employees started asking for a no harassment, no bullying policy, and the chair at the time basically was like, yeah, whatever. You know, everybody needs to just put their big person pants, pants on. on, right? Okay, but um, that desire for feeling like we had a safe, protected environment has been there far longer than we've actually had a code of conduct. And one of the things that I had mentioned when we were meeting on April 25th was, you know, your physical layout of town hall and access to offices is one that really, I mean, historically, for all the times that I've come into town hall, even when things get shifted around and rooms get changed, like, there, there's not as much, it's not quite the scenario where people have offices or all people have offices that they are outside of the regular path of traffic from people just going from one office to another and that can lead to you know a sense that people don't have you know sort of a, the, protected, space. a, a protected space um, and that therefore they are you know sort of subject to not the winds but sort of like subject to whomever walks in the door and having no place to retreat in the event that they feel uncomfortable based on the interaction I I look I've been doing this long enough you know you, Ten employees are always going to be subject to somebody being irate, right? Unhappy about something, and to some degree, it, it kind of comes with the territory. But you know, there is a line, and if I could tell you exactly where that line was in every circumstance, I wouldn't have a job, probably. But you know, it, it's it's you have to gauge that, right? And I think that it, from from my understanding of sort of how we got to this point, there's just been a number of complaints that have continued, um, you know, including with some departures of staff and, and an overall sense that they're not they're not being protected in a way that, you know, could, could expose the town to some liability depending on the circumstances. So I guess my two cents is we have to at least address the complaints as they're coming in. Unfortunately, because we're a three-member board, this is the way we have to do it. I think Mr. Holcraft knows there's certain individuals in the town hall that probably don't wish to speak with them, and if we could just give them the space to not speak with them, we wouldn't have to continue to call town council and redo these meetings. <laughs> I think it's a pretty simple, simple task, and that's just my opinion. I'm not. Do I want to expand much on what we've already done? Not really, but we need to, I think, at least formally let them know we're watching and it's, it's not going to be tolerated and it will change if it continues. Yeah. Like I said, I think this was a kind of test the line. Right. I'd like to, I think my motion, if I was going to make one, would be that we approve the notice to stay away and trespass order for 18 comment and that we, um, reinforce or or reiterate mm -hmm. the um, uh, memo previously sent to the employees right and make sure that mr. Holcraft understands what the intent of that is and that we don't want to do any more rule lawyering around it because we just don't feel that it applies to us 
Um, the only question I've received, and it was something I wanted to bring up to you tonight, was if it's an open meeting, he has the right to be there and ask questions okay, and communicate. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and I just want to and reiterate. The, and the no trespass order, as yeah. written, says you can attend public meetings, right? The same degree as anybody else in the public. Um, in terms of the private events at the library annex, he can attend if he's invited, right? You know, it's it's just as sort of the discussion was a little earlier. If it's not some an organization that you're a part of and it's not something that is otherwise open to the public, then you know your ability to be there is the same as any other member of the public, which would be by invitation, right? Yeah, and I think where the miscommunication is, I'm gonna have to look at it. I think the email that went that out to the res I think the email that went out to the residents. I mean, uh, to the employees, well, might, so, might so, have stated something a little bit different. Well, but that, the, the no trespass order is different yeah. than, than the, okay. because they're two different things, right. right? One is letting the employees and the volunteers and staff know that the board will not hold, will not um, expect that they have to engage with Mr. Holcraft in person in the first instance, and that they can choose. The, the form of engagement to the extent that he needs to to conduct business, right? Um, and that's, I think, where Beth was talking about sort of the, the testing the line of it. Mm -hmm. The no trespass is really specific right now to the library annex because, in particular, I think that there are real issues about the degree to which the public generally is allowed to, to be there. It, you know, I'll, I'll broadly characterize it as by invitation or permission. Right by permission first, right, and then if a, a, a private entity has the permission, then. Um, uh, so your expl your explanation now to me makes a lot more sense than what I thought it meant. Right? Yeah, and, so and, I, and I think, that's I think clear uh, just to sort of clarify or just to amplify, right, and I'm not saying anything that wasn't publicly said. I'm sure Mr. Holcroft will correct me, but he affirmatively said at the meeting, "Yes, I have a right to do this." Yes, I have a right to go into that building and police what's going on. He didn't use the word police, but he said, "Look, I have a right to go in there, and there, nobody's supposed to be there." And you know, sort of. And so I think that was where you know there, there's no just that. That's where the issue I think arose. Although although Brad and Beth can can correct me if if they're if I'm mischaracterizing, they're you know sort of part of why they came to the decision to to issue this. Um, but that was what was communicated. Well, and that's why it's so limited, right? right? I mean, the reason why it's so limited was it wasn't an intent to, to deny Mr. Holcraft any any right or, or privilege that anybody else in town has. It was to define how most people inter interpret that right and privilege relative to that premise. Mm -hmm. So, and, and to not go around trying to deny others the use of the space if they choose to use it and it meets the constraints of what their group is authorized to use, mm -hmm. right? So functionally, by behaving in that manner and trying to evict people from the space who are private entities, he's basically denying the use of a public space to a private community entity and disrupting their business when functionally they, they have a right to be there and now he's disturbing their right. You know, it's kind of like that whole, like, your right to swing your arms in somewhere between my actual nose and whatever I consider my personal space. It's that type of definition. Okay. Do we want to hear from Mr. Holcroft on anything? It's up to you. Does he, he wants to address it? Do you want to you? address anything? Yeah. <clears throat> sure. First of all, <clears throat> this all started because I filed open meeting law violations against you. And number two, you haven't done due process by me. You've totally violated me. You say you get complaints. You say all sorts of stuff about me. Not true. I went in the library because uh, your former um, <clears throat> selectman said that the building was not to be used. And I went in there the night the lights were on. And I just asked very simply, why are you guys here? Can you be here? And they said, yeah, this, that, and then we all discussed it. And I said, okay, and I left. 
and all this stuff saying, oh, he's, he's doing this and that. It's a total lie. Total lie. I got something here from a, um, one of the members. <clears throat> I'm sure she's not going to lie about it. I want you both to see it. It's been notarized. <clears throat> and also, you guys should show me all these complaints saying that I'm bothering everybody in the town hall, which is not true. And you haven't done due process on me at all. <clears throat> and yes, I will pay my taxes. I come up the stairs like I've been doing for the last 30 years, and I will pay my taxes. And when I have to pay my taxes again, I'm going to walk into this building and I'm going to pay them. Okay? You people cannot tell me I cannot come in my town hall. Yeah. I've done nothing wrong in this town hall, and I haven't bothered anybody. This is all political. Okay? And it's the same old group again. You and your cahoots, Beth. Okay? Same thing. Now you can smile and laugh all you want. Okay? And I got you. I've got you lying, and I'm going to prove that to you. <clears throat> okay? You're making accusations. And tonight, I should have been notified. You, you're discussing my character tonight in an open meeting. I was not notified in advance. You have to do that. I did not know you were going to do all this. That's character. That's behavior. If you no, want no, to address uh, that, under, under the open meeting, law, there's no requirement for an open session agenda item no. to notify. You should the have been. You should have, I should have had the choice. No, under the and as I said, yeah. when we were yeah. here on April 25th, Mr. Holcroft raised the same issue, and the open meeting law is very clear. Executive session purposes are discretionary for the board. They are not required to hold an executive session where one is possible. If the board chooses to schedule something for an executive session under purpose one, the individual that is the subject may request that it be held in open, which is exactly what happened on April 25th. It just doesn't work in the reverse. That's not what's uh, it's the same thing as the last meeting we had. <clears throat> So basically, you're trying to give me a no trespass. I have the right to go into that building in the library and ask a question to the committee. I don't need permission. I just ask them very nicely, and they were very nice, and that was the end of it. And then you get a few political foes that want to start the trouble, and that's what happened. And I'd like my letter back till we get done yet. Um, and that very clearly states my, my conduct, okay? I've been in this town hall for, what, 20 years, 25? Never had any major problems. All of a sudden, I file open meeting law violations and I'm getting all sorts of problems. And you're in cahoots with a certain elected official in here too, who's making also lots of accusations. And you're all sticking together. Let's get, let's bang, let's bang on Dave. I know what's going on here. Okay? And the way you handled the meeting last time on me, you violated me. And that's, you're, you're going to be hearing that legally. But you violated me there, my character, and you're violating me again tonight. And there's no reason why I can't go in that town hall. I've done nothing wrong. Where, where's the complaints? Where are the people? I want to see them. I want to see complaints. And so if, I, uh, if the board would like me to yeah, just please. read it. So the substance of the complaints have been relayed. I mean, there's no secret here. That, that you just said that the, the, the um, tax collector right? um, you know, has raised an issue about him coming. There's no dispute that that happened. Mr. Holcroft says, yeah, I'll come in. I'm going to pay my taxes. I'm going to continue to do that. So there isn't an actual, you know, when you get down to the, the specific of the complaints, there isn't actually a dispute as to that something occurred. It's a dispute over people's per perspective on what occurred. And the comments that, you know, Mr. Holcroft made are, are very similar. Um, to, to, what, I want to hear the complaints. I want to know who just, made it, and I want to know what okay. I did wrong. I so, want to know what I did wrong. So the board can decide whether they think that they've actually adequately described the complaints that you're going to take action on tonight. Um, I, I think pretty clear to me um, whether or not it's clear to you. You know, if you feel it could be clear, but you just you said exactly what the complaints were. I, mean, I mean, I can restate what I said, which is basically no. I mean, the, the two issues that that as as I've heard the discussion that are the library annex issue that was already discussed at the last meeting the the information you know mr chafee started off by saying hey look i've kind of I, i've talked to a different person i have a different version of events the i think the the statement that mr holcott was same, are, already one in already packet. you already been provided to that um so you have that information to provide a different perspective and you know the question is is are you comfortable that the weight of the information that's been provided to you from other persons 
you know, leads you to the conclusion that it's appropriate to issue this no trespass order. If the board is not going to expand it, right, I mean, you did raise the issue that there was a, com a, a written communication from the tax collector reflecting that, you know, she, she did not want to have to interface with him, that he came into town, in the, in, into town hall, he paid his taxes in person, you've agreed that there's no indication that he was um, unprofessional at the time, but you're not doing anything about it. If, if you don't expand the no trespass order. So I'm not sure that there's much more here that needs to be discussed or, or divulged, right? I mean, you know, if at some further time, if there's other action to be taken, then there may be an obligation or, you know, we may find a different mechanism to provide information. But, you know, this is one of those things where, um, you know, it, 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 we're gonna keep going down this path, right? And it's, but it's not, and, and I'm gonna say, it's not just one, like, there's a lot of people that are having conflict, and it's becoming really challenging. I mean, it's been really challenging, but it is going to continue to challenge, be challenging unless people can kind of figure out a way to come together and sort of say, okay, I don't agree with you, I don't like you, I'm not going to vote for you, but I'm going to behave in at least a civil or professional manner. And I can't, I, if I had, I told you this last time, if I had the, the magic solution for that, I, I, I'd patent it, sell it to you all, and I'd be retired. <laughs> So I have one question. Uh, this original email is from Brenda mm -hmm. Was she at the library annex that evening? She wasn't because she was out of state. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, at the, that evening, I don't know. Um, she had I, intended on coming to the selectmen's meeting to speak about it. I, I guess the part state. that I'm hung up on, because I don't know if she was there, she's the one that said what his behavior was. One of the members that was there said his behavior was not what is described by Brenda Meadowville. And if she wasn't there, then I, so if she was there, then it would be a difference of opinion from one to the other. But if she wasn't there, that would be concerning. Well, and this wasn't the only complaint either. Right. Well, it's the only one that I know. Right. But, okay, yeah. So there's, and if there's a YouTube video, I popped you an email to take a look at it if you watch through it the other complaints are are in there are in there regarding the incident yeah now what so complaint do you have with Brenda Meadowville well you're so, not being clear no no so at, at, what, at the April I want to know what I've done wrong you have not Ms. been clear Mr. Holcraft make it clear through the chair I will say to you we spent an hour talking about this on April 25th. It was very clear what the issue was. What Mr. Chafee is referring to was the library director's account of what she understood happened at that meeting that has already been discussed. And, and what Mr. Chafee is raising is, ought we to rely upon this account if she wasn't there? And what was discussed on April 25th were other complaints from other people okay. that had raised issue with, with the, the conduct and the behavior. Mr. Holcraft has denied it. He's denied that he acted in any unprofessional way. He's denied that he yelled or intimidated anyone. Let's be clear. I'm not, I, and it was very. If you watch the video, it's very clear he denies that. Okay. The question is, is it, does the board accept that, or does it view the other complaints, the, the information that it received from other complainants, to be more persuasive? So based on me not being at the April 25th meeting and not having enough information about this, I'm just going to remove myself based on me not being there, but not necessarily remove myself, but I'm just going to allow the two of you to make the decision. I'm going to abstain based on me not being there, knowing what the prior order was, what the prior complaints were, and who was there. Based on the little bit of time that I had to look into it, I still don't really know what happened. So. So I'll, I, and I respect that, Rich, but I'm still going to make the motion since, again, I don't feel that this trespass order does anything except define the way most people use the library annex today, right, and how they conduct themselves regarding that property. Um, I'm going to make a motion that we <coughs> approve the notice to stay away, no trespass order as written um, uh, regarding Mr. Holcraft and 18 Thomas Street. And so I'll second that. I mean, I was there. We've already discussed it. So that person here is lying then? The, the, no. 
she's oh she's, it's completely opposite of what everyone else is saying so there's no truth here again so, so i think that you can have and, and and i think you referenced it you said you can have have 10 nuns walk away with uh with if the 10 nuns say that something happened like right. what's, what's the right and if one nun says it was something different who's right okay no, I, i've apply. i've seen conversations where you have two people in a conversation they walk away with three opinions about what was said right so the Lo Lois's take on what happened that evening and the person sitting next to her's take on what happened that evening and the tone of the conversation. There was no Could tone. There was no yelling. So, yeah, this is again, a, this so is an open discussion. Yeah, yeah, this, this is, oh, yeah, this is not, my hearing. Well, this is no, my hearing. This is not a hearing. Yeah, you're, you're, you're damaging yeah. my reputation. You have a choice. You have a choice, have a choice, to, have a choice to deal with the decision. That, that's why you're on the yellow sign because you are a liar. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, if the so the board still needs to vote, yep. if the board were to choose to adopt this, I would recommend that you sign it and deliver it to Mr. Holcraft right now. Okay. And you haven't given me any memos from the last meeting either. Nothing. Just your verbal issue. You didn't tell me anything about the complaints. Nothing. You just said this, that, and the other. So again, it's not needed. It's if, if you have a course <coughs> of action after tonight's meeting, if you oh. want to take that course of action. Oh, actually, absolutely, absolutely. The way you there's nothing more that can here? be said. Absolutely. So yeah. there's a motion in the second. Yes, and I said, oh, uh, any discussion? No. no discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm going to abstain. Do we have a motion? Is there a I think I'll first? ask. Yeah, we can check. Yeah, I'm going to check. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Since you read, I would have been sitting here being here. Because if not, I'll take a picture for our records and we can deliver the original. I mean, really? the video is showing that you're signing it. So, yeah. but my preference would be that there be a that we retain a copy. Do we have a second copy? Your yeah, you know, you could, I mean, we all have copies. You can oh, sign I get, yes, I yeah, you can sign one. Like that. That's right. So just do that. I gave everyone a copy. Mr. Holcraft. I never go over there anyway, so except that one time, so who cares? Do you have my um, paperwork that gave you that? Please. So we're done with that. Let's see if we can just rapid fire. We need to provide. Oh, okay. No, well, no, we're good. Thank you. Uh, stipend policy. I believe you asked about the stipend policy. If you want to? Sure. I'll, I'll start out. So at the last annual town meeting, Michelle, I'll ask you if it, when you're ready. When you're ready. Okay. So at the last annual town meeting, we voted, the residents of Brookfield voted for a stipend policy. I'm not sure, and I wasn't privy to why it didn't happen, but there was some logistical areas. There is, so one thing that's been come up, one of the employees has retired. Is this a stipend or longevity? No, that's longevity. Yeah. 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 So did you so not want to stipend on there? There's two things, and yeah. I'm sorry. So do you want right. stipend still on there, yeah. or do you want yes, to skip I over? Do. Okay. I do, because I was asked by other members of the, in the town hall okay. about the stipend. Okay. So I guess historically the stipend was paid before now. But for what? Year for, the stipend is for elected officials. And somehow last year, and maybe Beth can expand on this, that somehow it got moved that the payment got made in September, I believe, versus in May. So I was told that it was a, a, an issue that the Board of Selectmen, at the advice of Kelly, I think it was the so, treasurer. So, so let me uh, actually, okay. yeah, let me uh, let me uh, um, give you a, a rundown on it. So it used to be that actually all stipends were paid pretty much monthly. They were pro they were prorated for the year, and um, they would like like 
our two thousand dollars stipend it'd be like one hundred and fifty dollars after taxes and we would get it direct deposited every month okay. that we served okay but there were smaller stipends that from like an accounting and treasurer perspective it was basically costing us more to process them than it was to pay act to, okay. to pay it yeah. right and um and then people people would leave and they were still getting paid it and there was like a lot of confusion over it so they changed it to at the end of the year you would get paid your stipend for whatever portion of the year that you served for the stipend so instead of getting your you know $150 check every month come June 30th or the last pay period of the year um, Tom will get whatever his prorated two thousand dollars is up to May, mm -hmm. and you'll get May to end of March. Okay. And and it was just to simplify the accounting and the bookkeeping and the and the finances around the the stipends. Okay. So. So when so when it's the stipend of like five hundred dollars, I think the individual that asked me about it, she said that I believe it's five hundred. But she was ex expecting it any time now. But she said that Lori said that it would be given in September versus okay. So, June. so I they, have no but, idea about the September. But they said it was like a policy that the board enacted last year. So are yeah. you aware so, of so, how? So we need to talk to Lori then because okay. that's inconsistent with what I understood that we voted. Okay. So yeah, what I, I understood so that we voted was that, that the last yeah, pay period fine. of June is when the stipends would get paid. That's what I was under the impression of. So, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, I can but Lori may, have, Lori may have some reason. Maybe she's thinking that it's after we close the books and then she'll pay oh, the stipends once okay. they're done closing the books. OK. Um, but it doesn't sound. So I'm just looking at this this policy that I guess was approved, says it was approved by the select board September of 23. Right. Not right. Yep. And it says they'll receive the stipend payments annually at the completion of the fiscal year. Yeah. But they so, but they have so to, the defining they, completion of the fiscal year, I think we were under the assumption it was the last pay period in June. And Lori may be saying it's, it's end of the when, you, when you close okay. the books. Okay. So but but the money is funded in that fiscal year, so it has to be either paid or um, what do you call it? It, go, it reverses through cash. Yeah. yeah. If it's not yeah. paid, yeah, it has to be either paid or encumbered, or else it oh, goes. Right. Yeah. Right. And so, if they encumbered it, it could it could linger sometime after June, but I wouldn't expect it to take until we close the books in September. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Okay. So, but a lot of things don't make a lot of sense to me. <laughs> so, but so, but I mean, to close, so, to yeah. close out the books, yeah. you're going to want to have it. I mean, yeah. you can you can go into the first two weeks of, of, of July. July yeah, to try I think mean, it could come out during out that pay, during that payroll, but I would expect that it would happen short. You know, sometime okay. in that time frame. So, yeah, and I actually thought it. I was actually a little irritated when we changed the site and policy, but I wasn't going to argue with the fact that they were saying it was going to be more efficient because we might have gotten away of efficiency. So. <laughs> um, so do we want want to add so, that to a future discussion with um, Lori? Lori? Yeah, or do you, does one of us want to just have the discussion with her and bring it back to the board? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Lori. I mean, the policy looks fairly clear by end of fiscal year, whether it's last pay period in June, first pay period in July, and probably defer to the town accountant for whatever is most easier. efficient and easier. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm pretty longevity. Yeah. Yeah. And so, actually, I've already been dealing with Michelle on it, which is why I wanted her okay. here. So, um, I don't know if it was Brad or Lori who raised the question. Somebody raised the oh raised the question about longevity. Yeah, Lori right. brought it up at right. the last meeting, and we said, "Hey." And so Lori reached out. We to already me. made some promises to people. <laughs> well, so so. Or not prop. So yeah. you folks voted at a town meeting to appropriate money for a longevity policy, Correct. right? When I went back and looked at the updated personnel policies, there's a schedule, right? And it looks like that's what you funded at the town meeting. But what's unclear on the policy, and this is just something that I think the board has to decide what you're going to do right now, 
and then maybe put it back to the personnel board. Um, well, we are exist. the personnel you, board. You, you are now? Right now. Okay. Yeah. So then you may want to clarify the policy moving forward. But the issue is, is it's unclear whether or not someone who leaves prior to the end of the fiscal year is entitled to that longevity payment, whether it's prorated based on the, on, or whether you have to work for the whole, you have to be employed as of the end of the fiscal year in order to be entitled to that longevity payment. And honestly, I could go either way. Either way. What you think is the intent, and then let's clarify the policy, right? Let's make sure that it's clear. On, the, on one hand, the idea is to retain people as a, as a reward for staying, and so if someone leaves prior to the end of the fiscal year, for whatever reason, there's an argument to say that, well, that's not keeping them, right? right. Um, but I just don't, I think the policy is unclear. And so, you know, I think the board can, to the extent that you have a person before you that, you know, left before the end of the fiscal year, you guys interpret what you think the, the policy should be and then make adjustments on it moving forward according based off of that. So we just yeah. got to be consistent in how we right. do it. So, so maybe we table so that. Fundamentally, and have a, yeah. So yeah. I think fundamentally, what we probably want to do is, because first of all, we didn't. We have the we have the policy, but it is in part. Um, I thought I thought that the I thought that last year the way that that went down was it was it was voted as an article that was what then expanded based off of like motions from the floor. Exactly. Yeah, it's just really right. complex. It got very complicated, very fast. Um, Why did I feel like it wasn't there? Was Jeff at that meeting? I think Jeff was there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't ringing a bell. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and then this year, I know we weren't intending on paying it, but it came as a citizen's petition for us to go ahead and pay it because we were that close to the levy limit and the, the policy manual is kind of a may, it's a may and not a will. Mm -hmm. from a standpoint of, of paying it. And I think one of the reasons why it's vague was because of the... Um, the amendments you know, to kind it? Kind of like, do, do, yeah, well, kind of the amendments to it, and then also the, like, there are times when we're going to have to make hard choices. We don't want to do it on the back of our employees, but there are times when it's just not, it might not be feasible, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, and, and I would just say, it looks like there's, I'm not sure if there's an excerpt of what looks like to be some meeting minutes, but I'm not sure if it was select board meeting minutes. It, or, it is, and okay. I put the date at the time. Yeah, so from, from August of 23, yeah. is, is this the individual that we're talking yes. about? Right. So it, and it, there'll be another affected individual. Well, that's, that's yeah. so yeah. You know, yeah. it looks, at least from what the minutes reflect, um, you know, there was a representation made that, that you know, that he would be paid at the end of the fiscal year, which is yeah. coming up. So yeah, so so so, so we did, and, 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 and so functionally, if we already voted that right, and we have set the precedent, then for uh, for other employees that fall in that same category, and I would almost argue that retirement, retirement is, I think is different, different than, than a voluntary right. Than somebody I got a better job elsewhere. Yeah. Right. See you. You know. See you. Thanks. We're feeling, oh, by the way, I want my money. Right, yeah, no. Right. Uh, but hey, I've, I've served enough time. I'm retiring from public service. You know, yeah, that's, a, you should. that's a, that's a yeah. different, it's a, it's a different to me class of employee, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and so I'm not sure if this article reflects the amounts that were actually um, ultimately voted for right. town meeting, right? And I'm not, I don't know whether or not it lines up exactly with what's in the personnel, the updated personnel policy manual. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what we're talking about in terms yeah, of Yeah, and I think, dollars. and actually one thing that's not captured in the minutes, and I almost would want to go back to the video, I think one thing that's not stated there is it was to be prorated based on the amount of the year served, but mm -hmm. I don't see that in the minutes. I didn't do these minutes. I wasn't there. That it was Kelly who did it. I was on vacation. Yeah. So, um, but I guess to that point, right? Um, you know, it looks like the individual that retired last fall was, you know, the bulk of this fiscal year. He was not. You know, he retired well before the bulk of the fiscal year. Right. And so I, I, if there's a video of that meeting, you know, it might be I, worth reviewing. You know, I can look. I can look it up. I, ju I just wouldn't want to. If there was a representation made to this individual well, well, that they I'm were going to get the that's, whole that's, amount, that's I saying. wouldn't say. That's what I'm saying. Right. That's what I'm saying. I think we actually probably should 
review it to see what the conversation was because I'm I'm ninety percent certain that we said to prorate, to prorate it, it, but I, you know, it was September. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just, I mean, I just, you know, I, I, I think it's, yeah. it, out of fairness to the individual, you yeah. wouldn't want to. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure, I just want to make sure, and if we didn't say anything, then the payment is the payment, but I could have sworn that there was some. some the question of it being prorated. Yeah. And so then the question becomes, do you want to discuss now how you're going to apply this moving forward to future retirement situations, or just, to, you know, maybe have have the town administrator propose? <laughs> he, he's not going to want to talk to me. Um, but, you know, propose... Look for new town council. <laughs> Ron, you love us. Come on now. We love we, 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 we've been by your side. Um, no, but but in all seriousness, um, I just think that it's a policy decision, mm -hmm. and the policy needs to be updated to, to fit. And, and I can do it, right? You, you just tell me what you want me to say. It's doesn't take much to yeah, I think, write. I think we can work on it. And so, on it. so one of the concerns that I had about it was we had a motion on the floor, and then it got amended, and then amended again, I believe, and then it went to this was full-time employees, then all of a sudden part-time employees got put into it, firefighters, rescue, and, and I, don't, I don't want to take anything away from the fire or rescue or any ambulance, anyone there, but I don't know that we should have a one-for-one -one for a part-time job versus a full-time job. Well, there's so, different levels for part-time versus full-time. Well, and so I think, the, the other and I think we can talk about that tomorrow okay. because okay. we need to go through the, the budget. But, well, we have to reopen. We haven't actually formally voted on the warrant. Okay, so the only thing I'll tell you is is the appropriation is thing. the funding. Yeah. doesn't require you to do this, right? It's a, right. It's, a, it's a decision of you folks as the chief executive officer in crafting the personnel policy. The, the, the town meeting can't vote it, right? It's, right? You guys vote it, but this is the funding for it. So, you know, you, obviously you take into account what town meeting, the, you know, the, the, what town meeting is expressing to you and the vote to fund it and sort of the motions that, as they were made on the floor, but ultimately I think you still do need to look back at the policy and decide what that policy is gonna be. And, and again, use this opportunity to clarify it. Because mm -hmm. I was, you know, when I looked at it, I was like, oh, straightforward, but not. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Um, and then I motioned that we just skip over reopening the annual town meeting warrant because we have to go to an executive session that started at 7.15. <laughs> so, make a motion to move to executive session under... No, we're going to... No, we're, gonna, oh, we're just oh, closing we're this, close this meeting. meeting. Okay, and so then, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.